y'all, it's Myra Douglas. I'm here at the Eye of the Dog Art Center in San Marcos, Texas, where I keep my studio. Why don't y'all come on in and check it out? So this building for many years was our tool shed and it was full of lots of big chains and sharp things and tractor parts all like hanging from the ceiling and spiders really like to hang out in it, which we're all cool with them, but not necessarily like a working space that you just want to spend a lot of time in. And Billy Ray came to me and said that he dreamed a dream of turning it into a workable space for an artist. And I had been waiting for a long time to have a space here. So we got together with Graham Arisman. We designed this whole building in such a way that I could have a lot of natural light, but also have a lot of privacy, be able to have my own sink, a little refrigerator so I could keep my beers and snacks in there. And it turned out beautifully. I'm so lucky to be here. I have a studio mate on the other side of the wall, um, Stephanie Hinckley, who is a wonderful maker that I met in art school in Northern California. And I'm super lucky to have her there. But let me get a little bit into the nuts and bolts of what makes this studio work really functionally for me. Um, one of the the heart of my studio, because I do throw a lot, is this wheel right here, which is a Shimpo VL Whisper that I bought, um, used for $500 from the Clay Lady Co-op in Nashville, Tennessee, where I used to keep my studio. Um, one of my favorite things that I figured out that works with wherever I'm working, if I'm doing finished work or if I'm throwing, is this great little movable table that adjusts. So if I'm standing sculpting, I can put it up. If I'm throwing here at the wheel, I can have it down here and keep all of my tools and usually balls of clay easily accessible. Ball of clay goes on the wheel. I use the tools to throw it and then they go on my finish boards, which stack up right here. Once things are drying out here, they wind up moving over yonder ways where I have this area, this table where I do most of my finished work. Um, I do most of my cutting and balling in this area right here. Right now I have an extra board to keep my red clay separate from my white clay. So when I'm done with the red clay cycle, I'll pick this extra board up and I'll go right back on the table so I don't get my red clay just completely embedded in this MDF tabletop, which also worth mentioning. Personally, MDF board is my absolute favorite surface for working with clay. It doesn't add a texture. It doesn't absorb a lot of the dust, so it's easy to clean, but it also releases the clay from the surface without it getting like stuck on there. Um, I do have other designated areas in my studio. This is where I keep all of my mixed glazes and slips that I make myself from recipes. Um, I keep all my commercial glazes, slips, and underglazes stored over here, all organized together, which are going to be getting more use because all of the work that I'm making for Texas Clay Festival this year is Cone 6, which is completely new and different from the wood-fired work that you guys are used to seeing. I have over here where I usually store either work that is finished and ready to go into the kiln or work that is completely finished and it's already been fired. But as you can see right now, everything that is there is greenware because I'm getting ready for Texas clay and nothing has been fired yet. Um, because of the luxury of electric firing, I can just go ahead and keep on working for a little bit longer than maybe I normally would. Um, Y'all can see that over here, I've been doing a bunch of finished work in this station. Um, and typically I'll sit up here I have my little comfy pad and my swivel chair. Um, so this is one of the new pieces in the red clay. And this was thrown on the wheel. It was round. I trimmed it here at the bottom with a rasp. Um, this is absolutely, I think, one of the most underrated tools. They're amazing. This is Mud Tools one, and it comes with a handle. And I ripped the handle off. And I also will break them into little pieces for getting into crevices and stuff. Um, once I've rasped it, I like that rasp texture, but it's not what I'm going for in this work because I'm adding a lot of decoration on the surface. So I basically am preparing myself a canvas to print on. 
um, and add decoration and carving and stuff. So I then will smooth it out with just one of these fancy little cheapy metal ribs that you get, one of the little finger slicers. Um, and then this, which I've left some of the evidence of the process because I just really love the way that looks, all the little edges and bits of clay and stuff. When I dip it in the white slip that I'm using, it will bring out all of that texture as you can see in the cups over there that have already been dipped. Um, and then that will get decorated and printed on with velvet underglaze. And this is an example of where I've already printed um, and this is the piece of paper that it was printed from. So it's an image transfer that I'm making myself. Um, and I'm using a lot of text as design, a lot of vintage images that are, um, you know, open source stuff that I found from like the Library of Congress um, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, pirating those images. But... Speaking of this cup right here, I need to get back to work so that I can have many, many beautiful pots to bring to y'all for Texas Clay. Um, and thanks for visiting my studio. Hopefully, I'll see y'all soon.